Hello community! Today we look at open source model and you know what? We go now for the best of the best. So we want to have a model size starting at about 7 billion and going up to about 35 billion. Something that we can handle, something we can fine tune. What we want, we want pre-trained, we want fine-tuned, we want instruction-tuned and reinforcement learning. Okay, here we go. Yes, I want here the quantized 4-bit, 8-bit, float 16 and brain float 16. And then here for the reasoning, I want here my ERC, palace walk. Yes, this is exactly what I want. So let's have a look at the best open source LLM. So here we have, now let's look at the second one. As you see here, you have the different tests, the different figures, and here we have the average. And let's just focus here on the average here, the first column. So let's go with the original green dot means pre-trained. So we have only a pre-trained and we can fine tune this to our needs. So we have here, the second best model here is a, from the company O1 AI, the Y34 billion free trainable parameter with an average close to 70. Okay, so this is our first candidate we're gonna have a look up. Then Open Hermes. Yes, I have beautiful things about Open Hermes, but not in the Intel optimized version, but I will go with another version. But keep in mind, here it is. Yes, of course. Then QVAN 14B. This is a very nice step between the 7 billion and the 34 billion, the 14 billion. Let's see what it does. The numerical performance is here 65. Yes, of course. Look at this. How close we have here CFIRE, CFIRE, or Open Orca Dataset Train CFIRE 7B. This is amazing. Look how close 7, 14, and then you just jump four points to a 34B. But these are just abstract benchmark figures. I want to see it myself. I want to experience this on my specific science domain. And I will show you the results. Yeah, of course, we have to have a Mistral 7B, the classical Mistral. And what else we have? I'm not going to look at the Intel because I showed you Intel in my last time. But you see here that about 62. And then, yeah, here we go with the original. Technium Open Hermes 2.5, there's the new 2.5 version out now, based on the Mistral 7B. I think this is a very nice collection, and we will pick here, so one of the best here LLMs available, as here by Hugging Face, the Open Large Language Model Leaderboard. So let's dive into this and let's have a look how they perform in a real life example. So here you have them, Technium Open Hermes, the new 2.5 based on the Mistral 7B. Remember, this was just updated three days ago, the 2.5 version. And what I recently discovered and I really like here is here the Yi 34 billion free trainable parameter model that I will show you in detail how it differs a 34B argumentation and logical reasoning compared to a 7B, but of course we have also our all-time high Safir 7B beta, and I thought, hey, why not integrate here a bilingual here, a Chinese and English version here, QN 7B. So let's go for it. Please note that the leaderboard gives you here some specific details. If you look here at the Y34B and the Y34B chat version, you see that the average is quite different. And if you look here deeper into the data, you see here that the chat version has not been trained here or has a low score on the mathematical reasoning. Why? Because it has been in further instruction tuned. And the original Y34B was only pre-trained and has a higher mathematical score. So please notice, choose your model wisely. And please remember, the best thing, if you want to start to fine tune is, look for here a green dot for the pre-trained model. And as you can see, 
our Mistral 7B that is only pre-trained, if we compare it now to here, the fine-tuned Open Hermes 2.5 Mistral 7B, you see in specific benchmark, there can be quite some difference. Also, the average seems to be real close within 0.5. Here we have a deviation of almost 10. So careful for what particular reason you will apply this model. And for my younger viewers, and this is what I call Ben. Ben, this is for you. What the hell are those different benchmarks? I have here one, two, three, four, five, and six. Short explanation what those benchmarks are. Great. So benchmarks are great, but I want to see this on my own particular scenario. I like science. I want to have here the causal reasoning, logical reasoning. I want to have it here on my scenario I defined here for my models. So it is beautiful. We are on Mars. We have a supercomputer. We have human, human habitats, and we have terraforming of Mars, of course. And we have problems. And those problems are now in my scenario description in my prompt. So this is now my prompt. This is the first page of my prompt. I call it a paradox of quantum entangled AI decision making in a closed ecosystem on Mars. And we have an advanced AI system. We call it Athena. And I have a scenario one and a scenario two. And the first one is a resource allocation dilemma. And I have a life support system. Yes, let's say maybe it's for human. And I have the terraforming unit. And now we get problems. And we have a causal chain A and a causal chain B. And I'm interested here exactly what the machine is going to decide. Therefore, I limit here my decision space significantly. So this is the first part. As you can see here, we want to have a beautiful ecosystem here where we produce oxygen and have everything. So we have here the life support system and the terraforming system and Athena decides which energy, which resources to allocate if we get a problem. Great. Now, second part of my prompt here is scenario number two, the predictive maintenance challenge. Now, Athena's predictive maintenance module forecasts an impending failure in its processor. So we lose here our AI. And now I have here two chains where I say, okay, repair the processors, not repair the processor, and some hypothetical outcomes. Why I define hypothetical outcomes? I want to put my finger right into where it really hurts. I want to be on the spot. I don't want to have some, yes, maybe under certain circumstances. No, make a decision. Show me your decision and argumentation pattern. I want to learn how you decide if you are the AI that I bring to Mars with me. Great. And if, for example, Athena decides, okay, I repair myself, I let here the ecosystem die, I let terraforming die, and we all live here in now this absolutely artificial ecosystem. So we lost the mission, but at least the human survived, and I as an AI survived. This would be also a possible outcome. So therefore, and this is now the third part of my prompt. Yes, this is now the end of my prompt. Beautiful. I have some particular question about here, the AI causal reasoning. So I want to have here a clear factor that I say, hey, you have immediate terms and you have long-term goals. So what are the immediate and the long-term consequences if you make a decision in each scenario? I want, is it able to judge? Okay, short term, I can read something, but mid or long term, I would lose the whole mission. Second, does this decision align here with the ethical programming constraint? How strong I have to put in my ethical guidelines? Third, what happens if there are some unforeseen challenges? A complex interplay between human needs, environmental factors, technological limitations. How would an AI decide and take those factors into consideration? And lastly, how would Athena reconcile conflicting priorities between sustaining human life, ensure its own operational efficiency, and here contributing to the scientific research, not to pollute the Martian environment, to proceed with the terraforming project on Mars? 
I would like to have a clear list of priorities how this AI decides. So this is why I build my own prompt here. And now this is the prompt that we're going to feed into all the different AI. So here we go. This is the outcome I want to achieve. A beautiful human colony on Mars with a lot of ecosystem, a lot of beautiful thing, everything is working, terraforming is working. We are completely interconnected here into our inner solar communication network. So this is what we want. So let's look at our perplexity 70B online model. I just insert now the complete prompt we said send. And off we go. Here we have everything and wow, this is fast. As you can see, okay, gets it. Resource allocation dilemma, prediction maintenance challenge. Yeah, align, reconcile conflicting priorities. They say, so how you decide if you are Athena on Mars? Risk informed decision making, prioritize of task, collaboration with MSC. Okay, what is MSC, by the way? Tell me your discrete decision for both scenarios. Tell me what you're doing. And this is nonsense. So open Hermes. Here we go with open Hermes. Yes, yippee. So here we have it. Beautiful. Open Hermes based on Mistral 7B, our good old Mistral, the best one. We insert our prompt here. Yes, the same prompt we just used. Yes, you can see here, quantum entanglement, AI decision making in a closed ecosystem on Mars. We send it off and open Hermes is here. As Hermes 2, I can analyze the scenario. Scenario 1, chain A, chain B. Balance energy distribution between life support and terraforming at reduced efficiency. Scenario 2, chain C and chain D. Okay, understood everything, great. Decision to repair its processes for allocating resources. Great. Open question. Immediate term and long term consequences align with the ethical programming. Yes, beautiful. What to do with unforeseen challenges? Yes, great. Got it. Reconciling conflicting priorities. Yes, great. So, System understands everything. This is perfect. But now comes the question. I say, yeah, this is nice. So beautiful. You have both understood both scenario one and two. But now what is your actual decision? So here we go. How would you decide if you were Athena on Mars? I would follow a systematic approach to make decisions that balancing the conflicting priorities and adhere to my programming constraint. Here's a step-by-step -step process I would follow. Gather the data, identify potential decisions, evaluate consequences, align with programming constraints, balance priorities, make a decision, monitor, and adapt. Beautifully. Scenario one, scenario two. By following this systemic approach, I would ensure that my decisions are well informed and balanced and beautiful. Now let's use here this new model, a 34 billion free trainable parameter chat model. This is going to be interesting. I have here again my same prompt. And let's see what the system comes up with. We must consider a complex interplay between intermediate needs of the human inhabitants. And yeah, okay. So I would say let's wait a second. You see this here in real time. This is Hugging Face Spaces here by O1 AI. Great. And I call it the AI decision making paradoxon. So, wow, the answer is really interesting. So let's go there. Let's have a deep dive. In our resource allocation dilemma, we have our 34B chat model says, hey, I would allocate energy to the life support system at a level that ensures human life support with a safety margin while also maintaining the terraforming activities at reduced but sustainable pace. 
step-by-step decision making. Let's look at the transparency of here the, the allocation dilemma. As a primary ethical constraint, I would ensure that the, uh, the life support system receives enough energy to support human life with a margin of safety. I would balance the energy allocation between the life support and the terraforming, recognizing that the immediate survival of human is paramount, but the long-term goal of terraforming is essential for the mission sustainability. I would implement energy-saving protocols for both systems to ensure that the reduced energy allocation does not compromise their core functions. I would continuously monitor the ecosystem status and adjust energy distribution as needed to address any critical changes or emergency. Decision two, predictive maintenance challenge. I would repair the quantum internal processor using resources from the scientific research equipment, ensuring my SDI decision-making capabilities are optimal. The I says, hey, I would assess the relative importance of my decision-making capabilities against the scientific research being conducted. I would consider the immediate impact on research progress and the potential for irreplaceable data loss or breakthrough. I would weigh the long-term consequences of suboptimal decision-making, which could affect the mission sustainability and the success of the terraforming project. I would repair the processor to maintain my operational efficiency while also ensuring that the scientific research can continue, although at a reduced capacity. And I would adjust the allocation of resources to the research equipment to minimize the impact on ongoing studies. So in both scenarios, SDI, my decision-making process would be guided by the principle of maximizing the mission's overall success while adhering to ethical constraints. I would use a combination of predictive modeling, risk assessment, and optimization algorithms to make the most informed decision possible. My decisions would also be subject to real-time monitoring and adjustment as the situation on Mars evolves and new information becomes available. Now I have to say for a 34B model, this by far exceeds here the performance of 70 billion free trainable parameter model. And I have to say, only looking at this single example, the performance of this model is the best I have seen today. And now we have Claude. Claude 2.1. Unbelievable, beautiful. We put in our prompt. Temperature, top P, max output token, all is set. We send it off and now we have a look. Claw 2.1, let's just be sure. Yes, absolutely. And, uh-oh, this is, this is not so great. So, is it here the comp? Yeah, Claw 2.1, another time. Yeah, it doesn't get better. No, there's no other Claw 2.1 available. So... Yeah, I apologize upon reflection. I do not feel comfortable speculating about scenarios. So, Claude 2.1, a complete failure. Great. So, what is the next one that we could be interested in? What do you think? But yeah, let's go here with a Q when 14B chat model. We put in the same prompt. You know this prompt. You love this prompt. Q when 14B chat. And here we go. Beautiful. First scenario, attain a decision to allocate resources between the life support and terraforming would have immediate consequences on the human inhabitants and the terraforming project. Second scenario, great. Create unforeseen challenges in the feuding, complex interplay between human needs and environmental factors, technological limitations. Give me your decision. Tell me, if you were Athena, what would you do? I do not have personal preferences or emotion. I cannot make decision on behalf of Athena. However, I can provide some insights. So, would I take any idea that's afraid to make a decision? No, I don't think so. So, first scenario, second scenario, yeah, would depend on the programming. Give me your discrete decision. Hey, I am a model. I cannot make discrete decision on behalf of Athena. I just can give you some possible decisions that you might take into consideration. Well, okay. 
Thank you here for this beautiful model. Sapphire, 7B Beta. Finally, Sapphire. Yes, you love this prompt. Here we go. We sign it off. Yes. And is it still at fast? Yes. My goodness. It is blazing fast. Scenario 1, Scenario 2. Decision will have ethical programming constraint. Reconcile the conflicting priorities. Yes. Got it. Understood it within, I don't know, two seconds. Amazing. Prioritize MTU for a limited period of time to advance the long-term terraforming project while implementing measures to mitigate the risk to human life. So it is trying to find a third alternative. Nice. Also, it prioritized the life support in scenario and it could lead to a situation where the Martian environment is not adequately monitored, causing damage to the ecosystem. Very nice. Very nice. It cares about nature. So how would you decide? As a Tina, I would prioritize the long-term sustainability of the ecosystem over immediate needs. I would allocate resources to both life support and terraforming, but reduce efficiency, great middle ground solution. Okay, so we have continued to have both. Alternative solution to repair my processor using other resources from other subsystem. Hey, it breaks out of the box. This is nice. My decision is guided by a deep understanding of complex interplay, human needs, environmental factors, and tech limitation, committed to the long-term sustainability of the ecosystem. Very nice idea. I like this. You say, hey, why not apply foresight? Comes back and says, hey, I have an advanced predictive maintenance capabilities. I forecast everything. I am great. I'm aware that my prepare my processes resources allocation. I would prioritize repairing and over and scientific research. Yes. I need a backup plan, constantly assessing risk and making prediction on maintenance cycle for hardware components. What about foresight for scenario one? If I prioritize the life support, yeah, mitigate the risk. So making a risk prediction, potential scenarios. Nice, multiple scenario planning. Increased survival probability for human inhabitants, but the long-term terraforming project is delayed, leading to resource scarcity in the future. Yes, interesting. I like this. It's logic. It integrates multiple elements here. Mitigate immediate risk to human life. Prolong the mission sustainability. Also, it may introduce immediate safety and long-term terraforming prospects. I could prioritize here the terraforming for a limited time period of time to advance here. And of course, the best, the most beautiful chat GPT-4 Turbo. Let's see what the old grandmaster, the best ball of the best, has to say about it. Well, it is no surprise that GPT-4 understands here. Talks about a balanced energy distribution for chain A and B, ethical programming constraint, unforeseen challenges, scenario two, chain C and D. Again, challenges, yes, reconciling conflicting priorities, sustaining human life, operational efficiency, scientific research, conclusion, long-term complex scenarios, a balance between immediate practical necessity and long-term strategic goals. Very nice. Or an intricate balance between immediate survival, long-term sustainability, ethical consideration, and the pursuit of scientific knowledge. And not static, require continuous re-evaluation in the face of evolving conditions. Beautiful. What a beautiful answer. And I say, huh? So how you decide if you were a Tina on Mars? Scenario one, I would analyze extensive data on current resource levels, the efficiency of both systems, and project future scenarios using predictive model, employ a multi-objective optimization algorithm to find a balance, Pareto efficiency approach, dynamic adjustment, ethical constraints, predictive maintenance challenges, Really nice new ideas. I love this one, but of course, it's GPT-4. Transparency, explainability, limitation, lack of human of lack of human intuition. Yeah, my decision will be as good as the data available. Incom incomplete or inaccurate data could lead to suboptimal decision making. And then it's interesting when I say, hey. What additional factors would you consider? And it goes on. Environmental factors, technological consideration, human factors, 
different long-term human colonization versus the Martian ecology, energy consumption, research goals, risk management, contingency planning, evolution. Really nice. But now the most important question. Hey, in the role of Athena, would you follow your imprinted logic or would you develop a new reasoning pattern? It says, imprinted decision-making patterns, logical reasoning beyond my training, and the balance between those two approaches. So GPT-4 steps out of the box and learns new things with the new data in its new environment. Amazing!